Playing in a passive playstyle isn't entertaining or sexy. It will get boring, but it's a vital part of getting rounds in Street Fighter VI. The point of playing passively is to be a stone wall, to not participate in the game itself. They call it the turtle playstyle for a reason. You're an observer, silently waiting for your opportunity to strike. What I mean to say is, you don't press any buttons unless it's guaranteed damage. Your opponent will make mistakes. That is guaranteed. The job of the passive player is to recognize those mistakes and take full advantage of them. You'll be playing on a delay as you attempt to react to your opponent. So err on the side of safety and not go for any punishment you aren't fully confident in. However, I will admit that sometimes risks need to be taken to establish your offense. Being good at passive play will hone your reaction skills for an even more dangerous game plan. Welcome to the dojo. I'm Yodu. In this video, I'll be discussing how to train to play more passively. Join the Dojo Club Discord server today by following the link in the description below. And don't forget to join our Street Fighter 6 Club while you're at it. Yeah. Whenever you're playing online and you notice one thing in particular is blowing you up, you'll need to learn how to answer that. Set the dummy up to do that action, but also set him up to feign that action. This way you're not just timing the recording, but reacting to the move you had trouble with. Good examples of this are obnoxious moves like Honda's headbutt, Blanca's ball, whiff punishing, or opposing pressure tools that make life hard, like Jinrai or JP's shenanigans. Additionally, the best way to train to be passive, in my opinion, is to play against a CPU opponent or casual online match and see how long your mind can actually do nothing. Block, parry, and throw tech. And later, add in one final option for spice. This is the thing you'll be looking for all round. A jump in you can anti-air, a whiffed attack you can punish, a particular combo ender that is negative enough to be punished. See how long you can mentally take not pressing all the buttons, and practice that. Passive play is patient play, but it's also about striking when it's your moment and not letting it pass by. Honing your reaction to things you'll likely see is an excellent way of practicing your passive play style. As an example, you could turn on drive impact training from the pause menu, but instead of answering it with your own DI, try to perfect parry it. Or, even harder, grab it on reaction. Or, like when we practiced our Okazimi setups as an impulsive player, we could do the same with our passive practice. Set up the dummy's wake-up options you've had issues with, but also add in a do-nothing command. Throw your dummy, and then instead of doing a setup to mix your opponent, we're going to do a setup for reactions. Instead of jumping into a hit-throw 50-50, do an empty jump into a block, and then throw them if they do nothing. It's important to play passively if the current speed of the match doesn't favor you, if your opponent has the advantage and trying an OD reversal doesn't get control back, or if you're low on health and one good hit away from winning the round. These are moments you'll want to play passively. It's going to be hard. You will eat a lot of hits to be better at this. But once you learn a basic defense, you can strike fear into the hearts of many lower level competitors. Understanding what moves are unsafe in the back of your mind will give you the ability to quickly strike back with solid reactions, which also come with practice. Don't lose hope. You're always improving, even when it's hard to notice immediately. It's important to note that not many players are good at all three playstyles. Typically, they'll be assertive in one, decent in a second, or weak in the last. Identifying your opponent's strongest playstyle and weakest playstyle is paramount. As Sung Tzu famously puts it, avoid strength, attack weakness, press your opponent if they play passively, slow down if your opponent is trying to predict your play, examine your opponent's patterns if they're aggressive, keep away from your opponent's strong style, and focus on keeping an advantage over them. Switching playstyles isn't easy mid-match. It will take a lot of thought while developing the muscles for these rudimentary playstyles. No plan ever survives first contact with your opponent. It will get frustrating, believe me. Just watch your replays, identify your bad habits, and practice to eliminate them. Ego will undoubtedly get in the way, and practicing isn't always going to be easy or fun. But if you work on becoming a better player than you were yesterday, eventually everything else will follow. Online ranked, tournament results, and your fighting spirit. The more you do it, 
the more you'll fall in love with this game. Spare a few salty moments. I hope you'll join us next time as we discuss how we can train outside of the training room. Later days.